This year, um, we are in 2016. Simply's 100 years old, so we all give ourselves a pat on the back, um, which is good. There's going to be a lot of stuff coming out of our home office for this initiative. Uh, we're hoping that we're going to get them to come up to our boot camp in, in June. Um, so, uh, and that is, uh, if you want to mark it roughly in your calendar, is June 20th, 21, and 22. 20th being the night meeting, 21 and 22 are the two uh, day-long <coughs> sessions. If you missed last month, that was at the, uh, the Mattamy Center. Uh, if you look at the pictures, they're not really that big. It's just that we're stretched a little. Um, but it was a great venue. It was our Christmas uh, get-together. Um, if uh, everybody remembers Maple Leaf Garden, they did a wonderful transformation of this facility. They were setting up for a rock concert or something of that nature at ice level. Uh, boxing. Boxing? Yeah. Same thing. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have uh, two rejoining or new members. Uh, when we get this information out of the home office, we, if people fall off the list and they come back on the list, even though they've been members for so long, they become a new member. So uh, we have Mikhail and... Uh, Ogden as our two new members. Upcoming events, uh, we have elections coming up in March, so you'll be seeing some stuff. We have uh, four, three board members that will be uh, uh, leaving us, but uh, if they reapply or want to reserve the board again, they will put their names forward, and if anybody in the crowd here wants to, or in the audience wants to, uh, serve on the board, just let one of us know. If you get the simply notice at the left hand side, there's a list of all the members of the board that are current. Just reach out to any one of us and uh, we'll tell you how to apply. Uh, we have boot camp again. These are the, uh, as of this writing, it was potentially the 14th or 15th, but now it is the 21st and 22nd. So basically <coughs> remove 14th and 15th from your on that. Uh, again, Centi Centennial, there's going to be a lot happening over the course of the year. Uh, and uh, NEB is this year, April the 18th. Upcoming meetings, we have March, sorry, February 1st. Uh, the 9th, we have QOE or QOS. Um, we have a couple speakers on the uh, quality of excellence and service. Um, March, we have a joint meeting with AES and Cinti um, along the topic of immersive audio. Uh, April, we're still trying to figure out. May is NEB wrap up, so we usually do a wrap up every year. And if you point your browser to Cinti Sections Toronto, you'll see a, an update as to what meetings are coming, happening. As some of this here does, it does change. And that's it for me, so I'm going to hand the meeting over to uh, Reed Robertson, who's going to uh, chair this evening's meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Well, tonight's meeting, the times there are changing. <clears throat> One thing in life is constant, and that's change. A lot of people have experienced it in their work. I have. Peter, my co-ranger, has. Tony has. Because, you know, we're not working for the companies we used to. So it's <clears throat> in this industry, everything is uh, changing a lot. So tonight's theme, actually the first part on jobs, comes from uh, a meeting that the Hollywood section had in uh, September. We kind of stole the, uh, the topic of the changing job market. Are your skills relevant anymore? Well, they used to have these things called VTRs. You, know, you put tape on them and you get images out of them, and now it's a cloud or a server. Or, but the funny thing is, when the archive programs, the archive on the tape, data tape, was it, uh, I forget the name of it now, version 5 or version 6 is available now. Anyway, <clears throat> doing meetings like this, um, 
I like to call them pioneer meetings. You know the old joke about the pioneers? How in the old west you could always tell the pioneers the ones lying down in the prairie with the arrows on their backs? Um, we did one way back in 2012, <clears throat> Soul State Recorders. They were fairly new at the time. They were everywhere now. And uh, <clears throat> that was after the, uh, the Japanese tsunami in which uh, the Sony tape factory got soaked up to uh, Second level, I believe it was the bottom of the tables. On the second level, everything on the tables was spared, everything below was gone. And that hastened the advent of solid state recording. We did a meeting September 2014 on drones, something we'd never covered before, actually, in here. Uh, that was our uh, season kickoff in 2014. And uh, covering things like that, the change in the industry. Back in 2004, a company called Panasonic brought out something called a P2 card at NEB in 2004. That was 12 years ago. And some people laughed at us. And uh, some people poo-pooed the idea. And then later on, Sony brought out their own. And at Panasonic, we called it P2 Me Too. So now everyone's recording on flash memory out in the field uh, or uh, solid state recorders. There's a number of uh, devices out there now. But the us to tonight, we're going to talk about, first of all, jobs. Now you see them, now you don't. So take the final one. For that, we have two speakers. The first one is uh, Phil Frappier, who's a uh, senior partner at Searchlight Recruitment. Phil is a senior partner at Searchlight with over 10 years of experience conducting senior level searches in digital media, entertainment, and communications. Phil is well known and respected in the industry. Unique expertise in the area of emerging digital technologies and multi-platform content delivery. He sits on the advisory board of Next Media, along with background in film, television, and commercial production in both Canada and the U.S. He brings a wealth of contacts and knowledge to this industry and to Searchlight's search like clients. Phil began his career working in theater, moved to CTV to help produce pilots, sports and specialty programs, including the Canadian Country Music Awards and the Juno Awards for Insight Productions and the CBC. He spent six years working and living in Los Angeles, working on feature film development for Universal Studios Company. Moving back to the TV production world, he spent two seasons producing for Alliance Atlantis. Phil was also part of the prestigious producer program at Canadian Film Centre, focusing on the Canadian film and television landscape and connecting with key people in broadcasting, distribution, funding agencies, and independent producers. Born in Montreal is fluently bilingual, but I believe he's going to be speaking to us in English tonight. Phil? Good evening. Um, <clears throat> as Reed said, my name is Phil Frappian. I'm a senior partner at Searchlight Recruitment. Uh, this is Derek Lee. He's going to be, you'll be hearing from him shortly. Uh, he's a director at Comscore who will be providing some interesting insight and factoids on consumer behavior as it relates to job search as well as online general media trends. Searchlight Recruitment is the leading executive search firm in North America specializing in media, entertainment, and digital technology sector. We work with broadcasters, production companies, digital media companies, and many more. And we cover all the roles from finance to sales to IT and everything in between. We're driven by the needs of our clients. Uh, who are seeking to feel, fill specific roles within their organizations. Um, and, they, and we've likely done some work for the organizations that some of you people are at here today. Uh, thank you very much for inviting us here. It's a true pleasure to have an opportunity to speak with you, and I'd like to thank Peter Armstrong for inviting us here this evening. I'm not sure if any of you know uh, how I came to be here uh, and how Peter and I met. But it's an interesting story. Uh, I was hot air ballooning, as one does in the summer, when I realized I was lost. I spotted a man below and shouted, excuse me, I'm lost. I don't know where I am. And he said, you're in a hot air balloon, hovering approximately 30 feet above the ground. You're between 40 and 41 degrees north latitude and between 59 and 60 degrees west longitude. I said, you must be an engineer. He said, 
I am. How did you know? Well, I said, everything you told me is technically correct, uh, but I have no idea what to make of your information, and the fact is, I'm still lost. And he responded, you must be in management. I said, I am. How did you know? He said, well, you don't know where you are, and you don't know where you're going. You expect people beneath you to solve your problems. The fact is, you're exactly the same position you were before we met, but for some reason, it's my fault. <laughs> A little management and uh, engineer humor. Um, it's an old joke, I'm sure some of you might have heard it before. <laughs> Um, because engineers in our industry today uh, need to see the big picture and the direction a company and the industry is heading. It's no longer about hardware and signal transmission. Uh, as the industry embraces internet TV provisioning, cross-pollination of expertise in broadcast and digital media operations and technical services is required. Media engineering, as you know, is becoming more IT-centric knowledge of software, IT, digital media, must be married with an understanding of broadcast media systems. So, to address today's topic, um, slide one, does your old job and title exist in today's market? I would say yes. Uh, traditional job titles still mostly exist in today's market. However, what has changed are the skill requirements. In the instances, that it doesn't exist, there are new roles that tend to bridge two different departments, for example, IT and engineering. Um, management is often seeking one voice to help make technical decisions. Eventually these departments, uh, as I'm told, are going to be coming together. Um, and does your skill set meet the criteria for current positions? Uh, continuing to involve one's evolve one skill set is extremely important in today's market. Media companies, both, uh, both uh, daily operations and capital projects with lean teams, while seeking to address critical skill gaps through interdepartmental transfers and new hires. Expertise, which is highly valued, includes physical systems, platforms, user interface, and workflow. These are, import these are very important and valuable skills that you don't find in many people. Um, now that I've addressed some of the technical skills, here are some other important qualifications that our clients are seeking. Leadership and strategic thinking. Uh, we're often seeing companies whose leadership don't have the answers and they're looking for someone with strong strategic vision uh, who will come in and help them guide through growth and change. Creative approach to, problems, to problem solving. Lack of standards, or many standards, requires ongoing, out-of-the-box problem-solving and solutions. Um, a strong creative approach to problem-solving and the ability to ramp up quickly is required to provide innovative solutions for new services and platforms, which cross traditional broadcasts, cable, and digital media boundaries. Ability to work cross-functionally. Um, an expanded corporate skill set is required as IT and engineering departments are becoming more vertically integrated. Uh, being able to function and get things accomplished in a matrix organization is very important these days. Strong business acumen. A large as large infrastructure changes are needed, forecasting, budgeting, being able to make a business case are needed. Why do why? Why do we need this and what is the cost? I'm sure it's frequent questions that some of you guys answer in, today, in your work today. Um, and, uh, and then excellent administration and communication skills. This goes without saying anymore. Uh, engineers can no longer hide in their corner and tinker with their toys. Uh, they, now often, they now often communicate with outside vendors and suppliers and need to communicate and teach management in layman terms what they're doing and where they should be going with their technology needs. In today's market, employers, uh, employers are seeking candidates with multidisciplinary expertise and we have found it's a combination of these five, uh, of these five things. Engineering, 
IT, digital media, operations, and people. Understanding people, uh, number five, uh, and uh, behaviors and how people consume content is key because audiences no longer consume content passively. They go, out of, they go out and seek it and watch it when they want, how they want to watch it, to use an overused term that I'm sure a lot of you hear today. But it's true. Um, interviewing is a competitive arena, and here are a few key attributes to give you an edge. Um, positive attitude and energy up-to-date social media profile, well-informed about the industry, ideas and thoughts about the role you are applying for, and interest in the potential employer. Um, I can't tell you how often you know, we have people coming in uh, to interview with us, and they're like, oh, woe's me, things aren't going well, they're sort of very negative about what's happening uh, in the industry. I think people might feel comfortable talking to us because we're not the actual employer, we're the recruiter, um, but people shouldn't forget that we are representing our clients and we're tasked with bringing the best in class candidates to our clients. So it's very important to come in with a positive attitude and strong energy, uh, have your updated profiles done, well informed about the industry, trends, what's going on in the industry, um, ideas and thoughts about the role you're applying for. You know, so many times people haven't done their research, haven't looked into the companies, are applying because they need a job. Um, and it's, it's really important in today's age, and, and employers see through it, to, uh, to really have a strong, keen interest for, for the role you're applying for. Um, and, do your research, and do your research, and that will that'll come out in, uh, in the interview process. You know, and when people come in uh, with an optimistic uh, viewpoint on the industry, where things are going, we get inspired as recruiters, and we go back to our and we go back to our clients and tell them, you know, I think this person has a really strong handle on what's happening in the industry, and you should meet them, because uh, at the end of the day, our role is to gather the qualified candidates and introduce them to our to our clients, and then. Our clients make the make the decision at the at the end of the day at the end of today at the end of the day. Um, here are a few uh, ongoing initiatives uh, that people whoopsie uh, that should that people should be doing: uh, improving your skills through continued education, networking, stay connected with colleagues and friends, LinkedIn, keep your profiles up to date. Uh, looking at job boards, uh, not only, they're not only important if you're looking for a job, but if you're in a job, it's also good information to have, uh, you know, what are other people seeking uh, in the marketplace? What are other people doing uh, to stay up, to, uh, to stay up uh, with the trends and, and what's happening? Uh, if you are, um, if you are, uh, you know, looking for a role, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, keeping your LinkedIn profile and job boards are a great source for, for opportunities. Um, Indeed and, and other websites are other great places to go and uh, Derek, who I'm going to hand off the mic to shortly, uh, will tell you a bit more about that. But before we go to him, uh, I don't know if anybody has any questions or observations in terms of the information uh, you've heard, and or you could ask any questions after uh, Derek uh, has given his uh, his presentation. Where are these job boards? The job boards? Yeah, well, any you know, first of all, any any broadcaster production company on their website will likely have uh, will likely have uh, you know job postings, playback, any trade. Publications or websites will have job postings. Uh, LinkedIn is a great source for for jobs. People more and more are posting on on LinkedIn, um, and because they don't want to use recruiters, <laughs> because we cost a lot of money, they hope to find uh, people to you know directly from social media to uh, to fill roles. What 
examples of social media profiles, are you going to go into that in detail of what exactly, and LinkedIn is one of them, what other ones would, they, would you consider keeping up to date? Keeping up to date? Um, for me, and, and Derek will talk about it, I think for us as recruiters, LinkedIn is really the key tool. Um, you know, uh, obviously if you're on, if you're on Facebook uh, and other social, whatever social media platform you're on, you should be you should be you know watching the messages that you're you know that you're putting out there in, in the in the space and, and keeping those uh, and those uh, and those those sites up to date with your with your current information because as a recruiter I'm on LinkedIn you know three quarters of my day looking at candidates and uh, and looking at their profiles and if their profiles don't jump out at us you know we tend to pass those people by. Yep. So you mentioned that. What, what, uh, what about a profile on LinkedIn makes it stand out to you? Well, I think, uh, I think that if I can, you know, get a sense of, you know, this individual's being, you know, keeping up with trends, uh, you know, referring any articles that they might have read, stuff that they, stuff that they might have done, projects that they would have done, research that they would have come up with, posting that information, um, is is very helpful to uh, you know for us recruiters, and we go through all of that uh, to, when we look at somebody's profile. Yeah, that was the real space on the host support that. Yeah, you could do links to, to articles uh, from. It's kind of like Facebook. You can you can post you know uh, post a thought and then link it to an article, and or. And or uh, you know the other thing is getting people to say nice things about you. <laughs> it's always a good thing on your LinkedIn profile. But it's and true. It's, it's it's totally true. Like having those endorsements by other professional contacts saying that you have skills set in particular areas is going to be extremely important for. But, but you're not going to be able to do it because of course it's going to be you scratch my back. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't. I don't necessarily believe that actually, because in this new digital world, it's 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 there forever. So if I'm going to endorse you, I better be damn sure that you know you're somebody that I want to endorse, um, because my name is on that forever. That's not going to go away. So people people don't put those things up lightly uh, anymore. Yeah, I'm going to say that myself. Yeah, because it's, it's your name on the line, for sure. And the other thing too, and I'm sure Phil, you, you may have uh, mentioned it if I missed it, but is having your certifications on there too, and having associations that you're a part of. If you have, I hope you guys have Simpty on your LinkedIn profiles, because it tells a recruiter, or it tells a broadcaster that you are within the industry and you are keeping up to, to trends as well. All right, I will hand it over to my friend Derek. All right, thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you very much for having me this uh, evening. Um, I'm a director with Comscore. Been with Comscore for about nine years now. And uh, if you don't know uh, about Comscore, what we do is we're a leader in the digital space in measuring what people are doing online. So what platforms people are on, what devices people are using, where people are going online, so how many people, what are their demographics and all of that. So what I wanted to do is go a little bit into um, the data today and representing Comscore. On the side, I'm also a uh, part-time professor at Seneca College. I'm teaching the Internet Market Research Program there uh, at, uh, in, in the grad program. Sorry, the Internet Market Research course in the grad program. So um, what I wanted to do as a representative of Comscore today was go a little bit into the job search market, um, talk a little bit about and really quickly go through who is searching for jobs online, how are Canadians doing it, so what devices are they using, and how are jobs being posted or where are jobs being posted. And then I also wanted to talk a little bit about those trends. Phil mentioned about how uh, the, the, the times are changing and they are becoming more uh, about the industry trends on digital media, understanding how video is not 
only seen on a television now. It's online video, it's mobile video, all of that. And so some of those trends I wanted to go through in, uh, a little bit in detail as well. So who is searching for jobs online? There are 3.7 million Canadians searching for jobs per month, and that's 12% of the Canadian online population. And when you look at that number, out of a population of 35 million Canadians, or about 30 million people online on, on, an inter on the internet in a month, um, it's not that much, but uh, the, the job search category has slowly increased month over month in the past 10 years in Canada. It's, it's been going higher and higher, more and more people are on there, and people are trying to get a better understanding of how they can excel their career um, in, in Canada. When you look at the demographics of job searchers, uh, you can see here that they tend to skew a little bit higher for female. We have an index there, so an index of 111 shows that females are 11% more likely to be searching for jobs on a desktop device. A uh, breakdown of age, you can see the majority of people are within the 35 to 54 age group, and then a breakdown of uh, regions in Canada as well. Most people coming from Ontario, 48% of all uh, Canadians uh, searching for jobs online are in Ontario. And then there's a little bit of a difference in mobile. And when we talk about the trends and how people are using different devices, uh, generally you'll see the millennials, the younger generation, that are on uh, mobile devices and more commonly on mobile devices. 43% of all people in Canada on a mobile device on the job search category are 18 to 34. So pretty significant um, stats there showing who is searching for jobs. When you look at how job postings are accessed, uh, you can see here that the millennials age group, 65% uh, are coming from a smartphone device. So it's becoming more and more common that job search uh, is happening on a mobile device, and that's uh, where, where uh, employers and recruiters are ensuring that uh, it's compatible to be viewed on a mobile device. So that, that's just some quick trends about job search in Canada overall, uh, as it pertains to yourselves that are, you know, in perhaps looking for jobs yourself. Some of the top job search in Canada, the number one one, which could be surprising to you, is Kijiji. A lot of jobs are posted on Kijiji. Uh, Kijiji.ca jobs is the number one visited site in the job search category in Comscore. Number two is Workopolis. Number three, Indeed. Four is Eluda. Five is Beyond.com. And then when you look at a mobile device perspective, these are four of, uh, four of the top and, and great career services and development type mobile apps. On the left and far right, you've got Indeed and Monster, which are uh, traditional job search uh, engines. You've got Glassdoor. Uh, I don't know if you guys know about Glassdoor. It's a very interesting one where you can share job reviews, so your own job reviews, or you can look up other people's job reviews. Um, interview questions as well, so you can see what interview questions were asked by someone that previously applied to this job or is in this job currently. And then you can also see uh, salaries as well. That's probably one of the most popular uses of Glassdoor is being able to identify um, is someone in my current role at another company making a similar type salary or are they above or below um, the, the expected pay grade? And then the third one there is Fiverr. Uh, F-I-B-E-R-R. -R. It's a very interesting one that I wanted to bring uh, in front of you too because it's, a, it's an app and it's also on desktop devices too that allows you to hire or buy, uh, sorry, hire or sell your services as a creative professional. So for example, if I was a broadcast engineer, I could potentially uh, post uh, something like, you know, I am able to create a video for you in HD quality that is uh, available to be viewed on a mobile device. And I can sell that for $5. Or, so that's something that you guys could do individually. Something else is you can purchase these services. So you know, how do I sync a video with uh, an audio file together seamlessly and make it available for web use? That's something else you could do with Fiverr. So, these are the top four career services and development mobile apps that I wanted to bring, bring forward to you as it, as it kind of rounds out the career services and job search market in Canada. Okay, 
Um, going back to one of those trends that Phil uh, brought up and, and one of the necessary things that you need in today's industry is being able to bring that skill set that the companies are looking for in these times that, are, are, ha that have changed over the past few years. This is a graph from the Interactive Advertising Bureau. They're an, a, a governing body to understand what happens in the digital, digital space. And in this report, they are collecting the ad revenues in Canada, so the advertising revenues across different mediums. If you look here, you see a number of things. Uh, television was number one for many, many years in terms of ad revenues. In 2013, it was the first year that uh, the internet passed uh, the television ad revenue. You see dailies, so print, newspaper, magazines. The ad revenues from there have been declining really, really quickly. And you could see that in some of the news and see some of the changes that uh, some of these publishers are making. La Presse moving away from a, a traditional newspaper and going into a mobile app only. You see a lot of the uh, you know, Toronto Star and a lot of other newspapers making paywalls on their website that you have a subscription in order to read news content. Uh, radio has been increasing uh, slowly, but increasing year over year for the past 10 years. But the real story on this slide is the internet. Internet ad revenues have been growing substantially. And that's the trend. That's the trend and, and that's what the Comscore business is about, is understanding how people are using the internet, why it's so fast, why it's growing, what areas uh, the internet is growing within. So this is a breakdown of, of the ad revenues in, in order of ad revenues. Search is number one. So paid search results or paid search advertising, like that you see on the Google results page, that's number one. Display advertising, so the banners, follows, classifieds, mobile, video, email, video game. But of these on there, so the seven, I'm going to ask you guys, what do you think is the top or the fastest growing two categories of internet advertising? Mobile. Mobile? Someone said mobile. That's correct. The other one? Video. Video. Mobile and video are the fastest. 177% increase year over year for mobile and 58% increase year over year for uh, video. So it's really quickly growing and it continues to grow year over year in Canada and it's one of the major trends that you should be aware of because that's exactly where the, the, the industry and the, the skill set that you guys bring to the industry. Uh, this is from the Comscore data as well. These are non-digital pure play companies or brands that, um, that have video on their websites. So digital pure play are sites like Facebook and Twitter and, and companies that only have a, a, a business online. They don't have a television show, they don't, they don't do broadcast publishing. These are the ones in Canada that are, uh, have the most videos being seen in Canada. So people that are online watching videos, they're watching on CTV, they're, they're watching City TV, Sportsnet content, that's the videos that they're going to see. And so these are some examples of the clients that Comscore is working with where video is ramping up, mobile is ramping up, and that's where they're looking for skill sets that potentially you guys bring to the table in, in the industry. Any questions there? A couple more slides. 97% uh, of the total Canadian internet population watches an online video in a month. That's substantial. You go back five years, ten years, for sure 10 years nobody was watching video online as, as commonly because it sucked up a lot of bandwidth. Um, five years ago it was still very small. If you look at the trend of desktop video views, so people watching videos from a desktop device, um, it has been growing over time over the last probably two, three years, but after, sorry, in the last year it's been declining really quickly. That spike, I think that spike is around November, December of 2014, just so happens to be when Facebook um, created autoplay videos, so when you're going through your newsfeed, it autoplays the video. They, they recently stopped that, but um, what this is, is you see that decline in videos being watched on a desktop device. But it's really mobile that's driving the, the video space. If you look at YouTube, 27 million people are watching videos on YouTube. Um, but in the middle there, the purple, 15 million, over half of those individuals are watching videos on YouTube from a mobile device. 
And then when you break out smartphone and tablet devices, you can see that majority are watching on a smartphone too. So video has gone from desktop, but it's moved to the mobile device. We used to even upload videos onto our smartphone devices from our desktop. We download a, vi uh, a movie, for example, and then put it onto our smartphone. Now it's not like that. We're streaming. Um, data has become more affordable. Those are one of the major trends that we're seeing is that video and mobile is becoming increasingly popular uh, on the mobile device. <laughs> Content types consumed by mobile subscribers this is my last slide. Uh, this is the type of video that people are watching and again hopefully it's, it's uh, meaningful to you to understand where the skill sets are necessary in the job market. People are watching web-based videos. Um, most people are watching web-based videos so that's typically YouTube user-generated content that's what web-based videos are, and that's been increasing. Watching live and on-demand TV, so that's going to watch Modern Family on CityTV.com. It's watching live and on-demand television programming. Um, also increasing 22% year over year. And then watching paid TV video, that's like Netflix, Show Me, Crave TV. Paid subscriptions to watching television, um, and Lori will probably be going into a little bit of cord cutting too. Kind of a, a great segue, but also increasing, and it's increasing the fastest. So people are, you know, no longer or, or less and less paying for a cable subscription, um, and they're perhaps paying for a television video subscription that they can view on multiple platforms, multiple screens, multiple devices. Um, so that's a little bit about the job search market, a little bit of some of the trends that are happening, um, and I encourage you, as, as Phil mentioned, when you're going out looking for jobs and you're keeping your LinkedIn profile updated, you want to be sure to be talking about some of these trends. That's what companies are looking for. Myself, as a manager, um, that's what we're looking for. When we're looking to hire individuals, we recently hired an individual that um, brought up a very interesting topic to the advertising industry. Um, he brought up the, the fact that the programmatic space is going to be, uh, sorry, buying programmatically is going to be uh, changing the way advertising is, is, um, is dealt with in, in the digital advertising industry. So um, definitely look through that. Um, make sure that you are, are equipped with some of these trends and I'd be happy to share these slides with you so that you have that going into some of the, your interviews and, and conversations in your careers as well. So thank you very much. Are there any questions? Yes. Um, I'm interested in uh, a few pages uh, ahead with the trend of uh, going down. Yep, desktop videos, this one? No, not that one, uh, the one of the later, um, this inter uh, internet yeah. advertising and the... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So overall, it seems like the traditional is flat, and that the pool of money actually increased by the end of the graph, right? So I'm sorry to say that again, What what is flat? The overall, the traditional ones are flat, yeah, but the yes. total pool actually increased a, a lot com uh, because of the because internet of the advertising. Internet. Yeah. So the question for you is this. Can you comment on who is actually doing the cover advertising on the internet? And it uh, seems like uh, TV revenue is still flat. seems like there's no change on that. And who is actually more away from the day, the day yeah. so let's say? Yeah, it's a very, a very good observation. And and generally, I, I would assume that uh, over time, and given you know the way business is, there's just more money put it, putting, being put into advertising because there is a, a recognition that advertising it helps drive sales, and that's some of the studies we do. But putting it into internet is because of some of those trends. People are more and more on the internet. That's why some of these companies are trying to find more and more money to place into advertising. And they're keeping, yes, their budgets relatively flat on the traditional media, but they're recognizing that the internet is a new medium that they need to be on. Um, the other thing too, uh, you mentioned there, who, who is doing it. Um, the top, uh, I think I can name three or four of the top five advertisers in Canada. Number one is definitely P&G, Procter & Gamble. GM, General Motors, uh, TD Bank, and then it just so happens to be, and it's kind of a surprising one, but clearly Contacts is uh, number four in terms of top advertisers in Canada as well. And then to round out the rest of the 10, they are mainly financial, consumer goods, or um, uh, retail type advertisers that are, that are advertising online. Questions? Does that answer your question? Yeah. 
Does that answer your question? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I see the chart stops 2013. Are you noticing any drop in mm -hmm. internet uh, sales for uh, advertising due to the uh, rise of the uh, people revolting against ads by even ad blockers and things like that? Yeah, it's a very, very good point. So um, this is not com squared. This is the one chart that's not com squared. It's from the IAB and. This is the 2015 report where they released 2013 data. It's very, uh, very weird in the digital world, but that's that's what it is. Um, are we seeing a drop in ad revenues? No, uh, not quite yet because ad blockers are still very new in Canada. Ad blockers happen with 16% of the online visitors. So 16% of all Canadians have an ad blocker um, at least once present within the month. And so it's still pretty small. It is going to be impacting more and more as it gets more popular. Um, but the biggest impact this year in 2015, last year in 2015 was actually the change to Flash when, when Google stopped accepting Flash um, advertising creative. That's when there was a huge drop in, in um, ad impression delivery. But um, not quite yet in terms of what we're seeing with our clients. It's not a big enough thing to to um, to start thinking the sky is falling in the advertising industry. I think there's a lot of abuse by the advertising people with the internet too. Yeah. And I even complained to one one vendor. Yeah. They didn't even know that his, his website was being hijacked by uh, the advertising people. Right. He said, "Well, that's not our content." Yeah. And yet, when you try to yeah. buy their stuff, you were getting intercepted. There's a lot of fraud that's happening in the industry too, where people are putting ads within ads within ads and putting iframes on top of each other. But yes, it's definitely an interesting topic. I mean, it's probably going to get the government will control involved in that. Yep. Yep, definitely. Good observation. Any other questions? I'm going to stick around after if you also have some um, individual questions for me. Thank you very much.